everyone, welcome to the React Basics Crash Course on Coding with Chandler. This is a five video crash course series. If you're interested in learning the basics of React, I'd recommend checking out my last three videos first. If you're just simply looking to learn about the use state hook, then keep watching. Today we'll be learning about how state management works with the use state hook. There's an old way of managing component state through the set state function provided by React. So remember, hooks come with functional components, but a React class component would be using something like set state for state management. I touched a little bit on this in a previous video talking about the difference between functional components and classes. If you're not familiar with that, feel free to check that out. First, we're going to talk a little bit about what state is. In React, you can think of state as a way to remember data during the life cycle of a component. When I say the word state, think of it as a phase. A component can have many different phases depending on what that component is. For example, a drop-down menu like this can have two different phases, opened and closed. A form can have many phases as well. Sometimes it's empty, sometimes it's filled, maybe some parts of the form are filled but you're missing something. State is a way to capture and remember data throughout the different phases or states the component can be in. And you can then use that data for later use or make a decision based off of that change. Think of state as an object that is responsible for remembering the different phases your component is in. So today we're gonna to be developing a counter. I actually did something similar for a React interview and thought it would be a good idea to share since it's simple and straightforward. There's also an example of this in React's documentation, so I'll be sure to link that in the description below. Basically, this counter will contain a button, and upon clicking that button, you'll see the number increase by one. Each time this is clicked, we should see the number increment by one. However, if the number is even, the color of the number should be black. If the color is odd, the color will be gray. So basically, this will allow us to gain the fundamentals of state management and making decisions based off of the state of our counter. So that is what we will be developing today. Now let's jump into some coding. So the first thing we're going to do is open up your terminal of choice. I use iTerm. Then I'm going to switch my node version to 10.15.3. Now I'm going to cd into my development directory where all my projects usually exist. And what we're going to do is create our React app boilerplate. What you're going to do is run npx create react app and then give it a project name. I'm just going to call this counter. And what this is going to do is create a boilerplate React app and put it in the folder counter. Looks like our project just finished creating. Now I'm going to cd into that directory. And now we have our boilerplate React app. First thing I'm going to do is create my components folder. Your file structure is completely up to you. So since we're going to be making a counter component, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call that counter. It's like my caps lock was on. And inside this folder, I'm going to create an index.js file. And using this sort of file structure makes importing look a lot cleaner. The first thing I like to do is make the structure of my component. So I'm going to import React. So we need a function, component name, then call it counter and it is just going to return some JSX. I will have it return a div for now. Then I'm gonna export this by default so that we are able to use this in other files. I'm gonna put some text that says counter there so that when we import this in our app, we actually see something in the browser and we know that we successfully imported this component. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this in our app Now, as you can see, if we look in our browser, we see some text that says counter. That is our counter component. Now I think we're about ready to start building our UI. So right now we're returning a div and I'm gonna go ahead and give it the class name of counter. And this will represent our entire counter component and we'll be using this class name in our CSS in order to style it. I'm gonna make another div inside of here And this container is going to hold all the content that we see inside of the counter, like the button and the number. This allows me to easily position the content within the counter component with CSS, which is why we want to have another div used as a container. Now, we're going to need two elements. One to represent the actual number count that shows up in the browser. So perhaps we'll use a P tag for that. And we're going to need a button tag for the button that we'll use to increment the count. So for the P tag, which represents the number that shows up in the counter, I'm just going to go ahead and hard code the number zero there for now. Inside our button component, I'm going to go ahead and type in the word up. 
Now let's go ahead and look in the browser and see what we have so far. As you can see, we have a number to represent our count and a button to press. That's all we need for the UI portion of this component. We can worry about styling this towards the end, but now we can focus on the state management aspect of this project, which is where use state will come in. This will allow us to increment the number up from zero to X amount of times that you click on this button. Since we want to start from zero, we need to tell our component that in a more logistic way instead of hard coding it like we did here. So this is why we're about to set up what is called initial state. And the use state hook is going to allow us to do that. So in order to use the state features in Modern React, we need to import use state. So I'm going to go ahead and import. Now we're going to need two constants one that holds the count, then another counts that allows us to set the count and manipulate it. Now we're going to go ahead and set this equal to the use state hook that we just imported. And inside of the use state hook, as its parameters, is where we're going to pass in the default value that we want for count. We're going to pass in zero here since we want on originally on page load the counter to start at zero. So remember when you're setting up initial state, the initial state will always be passed in as an argument into the use state hook. So by default, count is going to start off as zero. So let me give a brief description of what's going on here before we continue, because this could look a little confusing. Remember, React hooks allow you to hook into React's features. So when we're calling use state here, we're hooking into the state of the component. Basically, use state is a function that returns two values. One is the state, which we clearly passed into here. Then it returns a function that allows us to set the state. So remember, when you are trying to manipulate the state with React hooks, you need two things. You need the name of that variable that represents that piece of state. Then you need a function that will allow you to manipulate that state, which is why we have set count. By default, it's set to zero or whatever number that you pass into the function. So count would be zero by default, but set count is what allows us to be able to add one to it every time we click that button. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace this hard-coded zero with the actual count variable. I'm gonna go ahead and press save and go back to our browser. I'm gonna press up and as you can see, nothing is changing. And that is because we are never incrementing the count on the click of that button, which is what we're gonna do right now. So in HTML, button comes with an attribute called onClick, which allows us to run JavaScript functions upon clicking a button. What I'm gonna do is pass in an arrow function that is going to call the set count function. Set count takes in a number. So for example, I could pass in the number five. And what is gonna happen here is every time I click the up button, it's gonna call set count and literally set the value of count to five. So count would go from being zero to five upon clicking this button. So let's test out this theory. I'm gonna to go to my browser, press up, and now as you can see our count is set to five because that is what we are doing inside of the onClick attribute. We are literally setting count to five. But that's not what we want. We want our number to increment every time we click on the button. So instead what I'm gonna do is pass in count plus one and press save. What that is gonna do is basically take whatever value count is, and by default we set it to zero, remember? Count is gonna be incremented by one. So if count was set to zero, like it is initially, count will then be set to one after clicking up. Then it'll be set to two if you click up again, then three and four and so on. Now let's test this in our browser. As you can see, every time we click, the count increments. So again, every time we're clicking up, we're running the set count function that adds one to the value of count. And that is pretty much it. That's the logic that is needed for this component to work. Now let's start styling up this component because it looks a little ugly right now. What's cool about this portion of the tutorial is that you'll be able to see how we can use state to then make other decisions in our component. We wanna make sure that on every odd number we show a gray color and on every even number we show black. So basically what I'm gonna do is create some logic within the class name of our paragraph tag. Remember, the paragraph tag is what holds the count and we want the color of that paragraph tag to change depending on the value of count. I'm gonna write out count modulus two equals 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 zero. Basically what we're doing here is checking if the number is even, meaning is it divisible by two. If it returns true, I'm gonna make the class name of this paragraph tag black. If it's false, I'm gonna make it gray. So basically what we're doing here again is we're checking if the count is divisible by two. And if this evaluates to true, then the class name will be set to black. If it's false, the class name of the paragraph tag will be gray. Now let's jump into some CSS. I like to use SAS instead of CSS because it has more features, but it's not necessary for this project. You can just use basic CSS if you would like. In order to use SAS in this project, I have to install Node SAS, so I'm gonna do that right now.
Cool, now we can start using SAS code to style our counter. First thing I'm gonna do is call our counter class name. First thing I'm gonna do is give it margin of 100 pixels on the top and bottom, and I'm gonna say auto for the left and right so that the counter component is perfectly centered in our screen. Then I'm just gonna give it a height of 500 pixels and a width of 425 pixels. Then I'm just gonna give this counter a box shadow so that we see some shadows around the edges. Then I'm gonna give it a background color of white, which is just six Fs, pretty easy for me to remember. Now I'm gonna start styling the container. Now I'm gonna write display flex, then flex direction column. This will pretty much just make sure that both the counter and the button are rendering up and down rather than left and right of each other. Then I'm gonna go ahead and center them. Now I'm gonna give the paragraph a font family of Arial. I'm gonna make the font size 36 pixels. And we'll want to make sure that the font weight is bold and that the default margin that comes with the paragraph tag is removed. So I like to say margin top zero. Now we're gonna start styling our button. So I'm not going to go too in depth with the CSS, but basically with our button, I gave it the background color of green. Um, every time we hover over that button, you should expect the color to become a little bit darker. I'm using dark green instead. Then usually buttons come by default with like a green outline when you click on them, so that's being removed. Now the most important part of this file is the black and gray class name that we declared over here. This is the class names that change depending on the count that is set. So here what we're going to do is call those class names. I'm going to call black, and here is where we're going to change the color to black. Then I'm going to call the gray class that we declared, and that's going to change the paragraph color to gray. Before you check your browser, make sure that you have your styles file imported into your component. Now we're gonna check our browser, and now we have this beautiful counter. I'm gonna go ahead and change one more thing in our CSS. I like to change the background color of our body so that the it makes the counter stand out a little better. I'm gonna go into index.css and change the color to this hex value. Now if we open our browser back up, we should see that the background color is this light lime green color, and that makes our counter look a lot better compared to having that basic white background. Now if you click the button, you should see that the number increments on every odd number we see gray, and on every even number we see black. If you want to see more details on the code or styling, feel free to check out my GitHub where I push the code up to. You can always refer to that if you got stuck or lost. But that is all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped. If you would like to stay up to date with me, please follow me on my Instagram. Before you go, please turn on my notifications so that you can get notified when my next React tutorial is posted. And that will be the last one in this crash course. After that, you'll know the fundamentals of React. So if you got through the first four videos, great job. If you haven't, at least you know more than what you knew earlier. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys soon.